Sin City, the place where anything can happen. 39 million people are lured to this desert oasis each year. Some to gamble, some to be entertained, and others for this. CES, the world's largest electronic trade show. It's where companies from around the world unveil their latest and greatest. The show floor is 35 football fields big. And we're taking you on a tour to see the gadgets you'll be getting your hands on in the months ahead. The lights are on, the stage is set. Time to check out what's to come. And we start with home theater. <laughs> TV junkies rejoice. This is the year everything changes for television. Moving to the regular forces from the reserves, uh, it's been, it's been, uh, it's kind of stepped up the game. It's like joining the pros. Master Corporal Mike Cantley, Corporal Duncan Campbell, and Corporal Mike Waits just turned pro, finishing seven months of intense op training. They uh, did mock towns. They uh, dubbed the map of Wainwright into that of Kandahar. And so right now, as it stands, like I know now, it's the cities of where they are located around. About 100 Alberta reservists will be deployed in Task Force 108 when about 1,500 Canadian soldiers head to Afghanistan in January. I'm uh, pretty well pumped and jacked up about going on this mission. It's, it's something a lot of guys dream about doing. A lot of people don't understand why we do it. It's in the steelworker's blood. His grandfathers fought in World War I. Staff Sergeant Ken Chattel has confiscated hundreds of pirated movies from city stores this year alone. We're not showing his face because he works undercover. They get them from a wide variety of places. Some are imported. They will be copied or manufactured outside of Canada and brought in. Uh, some are manufactured within Canada. It's big business. They can make an awful lot of money. RCMP say approximately 50% of all video stores in our city sell illegal movies. Many, like Superman Returns here, are still in theaters. We thought we'd see for ourselves. With a hidden camera, we went to this import video store. Scanning the rows of movies, we couldn't find any English titles. Just as we were about to leave, the clerk pulled out two boxes. This one is a two for ten. How much? Two for ten. Two for ten? Yeah. Thank you. Click. Lady in the water. Cars. All movies still in the theaters. For sale. Two out of three stores we checked had pirated movies. They'd come out like you know, the day that it hits the theater and the movie will come out uh, on pirated farm. And that's something this store owner says he can't compete with. He's been in the movie business since the days of Betamax, but he says refusing to sell the cheaper pirated movies could cost him his business. It was my destiny, there's no doubt about it. Uh, when I went for my first ride, actually with Tom Wolfe, I knew then, actually, that this was what I was going to do. I started dog sledding when I was about 19 years old and uh, just loved the sport. It was so much fun. It was very unique. A lot of people were interested in it. When I met my husband, the dog sledding was a great vehicle for us to share those things that we enjoyed together. The environment, the mountains, and the, and the whole environment, just stunningly beautiful and like to spend a lot of time in it. As it started, um, we had our, our friends who are our first guests that were interested in what we were doing. So we took them out dog sledding with us. And then they started bringing their friends and then their friends and their families. We brought our family into the environment as well. Good girl. Basically everything you'll ever do is for the dogs, believe it or not. Um, you have to make sure that it, the motors of the company are you know, together and they're fed and they're kept safe. Without these dogs, we don't have a job. Always take care of your dogs. Quiet, puppies! <laughs> they're excited. Actually, we decided that we would commit to dog sledding as a profession in the tourism realm. And 
Our first year, we had so much fun, actually. Well, it was interesting because there were two other companies that existed at the time, and each were on the doorstep of the Fairmont hotels. We were more into the the half day, the four hour treks and expedition type programs. And so our competitors kind of chuckled at us. I don't think they took us seriously. Uh, neither one of those competitors are in business anymore. Our company, I think, has been successful because we're genuine and honest about what we're, we're sharing with people. At least that's what I hear from the clients. You get to man your own sled, which is the best part. Um, it's beautiful scenery out here. It's unbelievable with the sun out and the guides are great, the dogs are beautiful. It's a wonderful time. It was fantastic. It was, uh... You know, just going along, there's dogs pooling, it's just the sound of them all sort of barking. It's just brilliant. Life is like a sled dog team, and if you're not the lead dog, the scenery will just never change. So grab hold of those adventures and strive to be the best that you can, doing your best every single day. And we get to see that in our dogs and our teams every day.